Hi. Right, so garden tour. Garden so I'm just deadheading these geraniums. This geranium came from my mum's conservatory in Scotland and it's only ever been indoors. But when it got down to Dorset, it thought this is like Provence. So uh, we'll just grow up the side of the house and that's what it's doing. So if you look at the, if you step back here uh, and you look at the side of the house, you can see where the old stone above the windows, if you sweep to the left, becomes a new stone. And so that was the original cottage. And uh, we built on this big room here with the square bay window, which has, if you come and stand here, uh, it has a wonderful view. And you can sweep out there. <clears throat> And when I bought the house um, nearly, nearly five years ago, there was uh, no garden here at all, nothing. It was just a field sloping down and a very derelict cottage, uh, which hadn't been lived in for about 12 or 13 years. So all the windows were rotten, the floors were rotten. Uh, it was all in terrible state. So we had to make the garden from scratch. Uh, and I think I've used I think I've personally laid 17 tons of Purbeck walling stone <laughs> over the last few winters, making these beds, the walls in the garden you can see inside here and the, the new bed over there, the new border with the lavender. And um, it is just the most glorious place. If we come this way, I'll show you a lovely view from the top corner. Uh, you come and you come and stand here. You just can't quite see it in in summer, but right up on the horizon, the the brow of that hill leads you to Egerton Heath, which we can see in winter, which was famous, I think, in the Return of the Natives. It's real hardy country. That's the edge of hardy country. Um, and then you step over here. Uh, and this this border here is um, this is the planting we did at Easter this year, uh, and it's very exciting because it was a pouring, wet, cold winter day, and uh, Domenico Fila and I planted this. And the, the, the plants were six inches high, and now you see it three months later, and the miracle of creation has. Uh, has happened uh, and it is it is so exciting seeing all this glory this color uh, and nature at its most ebullient um, and and then we've been there's been quite a struggle that big slope that leads up to the terrace there uh, it's very very dry it's created with rubble uh, and so there's no real soil there and although I've been emptying manure and compost in the in the winter it's still very dry um, so that has been a struggle to get things to grow there but we are slowly mastering it I think uh, it's a, a combination of nature and human effort and, and I've, I, I, that is the thing that I'm always fascinated by when I paint landscape is is where mankind and nature come together that symbiotic relationship to create something which is clearly man-made but which is all about nature it's just that lovely combination beautiful have you got a favorite spot in the garden i think i think um i think sitting on this bench uh, in the, the afternoon if we just sit down here for a minute and uh have a g and t uh, and have a g and t exactly yeah. i mean i think i think this is my favorite spot because uh you get a little glimpse of the view over to the right and these marvellous Scots pines, these tall, dark trees that were planted here, I think originally by the farmer who owned all this land back in the 1960s and then sold it off in plots. Um, and he didn't want to look at this cottage. So um, 
he had these trees planted. Uh, but I love them, and they mm. sort of divide up the view. When yeah. you're sitting by the kitchen there, we'll go back and sit outside there, and you can look through the trees. The dark blue of the windows uh, is a little bit of a borrowing from Monet's house at Giverny. Okay. Uh, I think they're very slightly uh, uh, lighter there, but somehow that seemed to work with all this colour. And um, yeah, it's a sort of, it's a paradise that requires one. It's like kind of ball and chain paradise because every spare moment is spent in the garden. And, uh, but then it is paradise. So it's like kind of a paradise version of a hard labor camp. Yeah, well, I don't get to see the hard labor. I just get to look <laughs> at the beautiful results. Come and see, come and yeah. see the, the view from the uh, table on the, uh, sorry. So did you have a theme with these plants, Hugo? Or yes, it's, 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 it's a classic uh, Hugo palette, really. Uh, it's uh, deep uh, oranges and deep yellows and pinks uh, working with the green and uh, offset uh, by all this white, the white cosmos and the white thalictrum. Uh, and it just, it just is a lovely palette. So yeah. there's nothing... There's nothing that's bright, bright red here. Uh, there's nothing that's a sort of primrose yellow. It's all these deep orangey reds, dark pinks, uh, and then the white. Uh, kind of thrown into accent by the, the kind of violet of the lavender. Mm. Uh, and it's a sort of, I suppose it's a sort of complementary palette, really. It's, it's, it's the violet and uh, the orange and the green working together with yeah. a kind of guest pink. Yeah, with a bit of satisfactory pattern making with the... Well, with a bit of pattern making. Well, that, 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 that was That's in the, nice. the planting, was to have repeats like this lovely white stuff, this thalictrum. And, of course, the only thing that hasn't yet quite uh, opened up are the sunflowers here, which will be a blast of deep yellow against the dark hedge. Um, and the dahlias, they're still quite uh, young, so they're not... Uh, at their full height yet, but uh, in another couple of weeks it'll probably reach its peak and then it'll be a slow decline. Do you want to have a look at the vegetable kitchen garden? Yeah, we could. Uh, we could. Hi, here's the gardener. The Guest appearance. We're making a video. Working hard. As hey, gardener. <laughs> yeah, here's the kitchen garden. So there was, this was this was just a, a derelict field, as well, full of brambles. Absolutely nothing apart from brambles here, and so the whole thing had to be cleared. There was a dead tree right in the middle of this space, and the first thing we did is build this wall to create. A sort of contained kitchen garden space um, and then we planted these lime trees here <coughs> bleached them to make us green and uh, here we have essentially two halves uh, the kitchen garden see the, the onions and broad beans uh, and then this side uh, the idea is, is to cut flowers so we've got the sweet peas cosmos and uh, various other things, Alstroemeria, uh, marigolds, all for cutting, for bringing inside the house. Uh, but it's been very hot and very dry, so things aren't quite as fecund as you might want them to be here. And then this wall has been a joy, actually, planting stuff. Uh, <clears throat> lots, of, lots of it has come back from Cornwall, from the cliffs uh, in West Cornwall. It's mostly over now. Um, you can see the erigerum and these lovely e eoniums, they come from Cornwall. Um, and yes, well, there we are.
Thank you.